let's have a look at the image that is given in this question. So what do we see? We notice that there is an elastomeric module which is present on the hook of the molar tube. There is a ligature wire which is passing through the module, bypassing the premolar and going and getting engaged onto the canine. Okay. So this is actually an example of an active tieback. Now what is an active tieback? So firstly, whenever there is an elastomeric module or any elastomeric unit like an e-chain or an elastic thread, they are actually force applying units. Okay, So they apply force. So whenever they are present in the system, the system is known as active. Okay. Now there are two types of active tiebacks. First is a type 1 or a distal module. So here the elastomeric module is present on the distally onto the hook of the molar tube. The ligature wire runs anteriorly and is engaged into the uh, hook of the posterior arch wire. Type 2 is a mesial module. So here the module is placed mesially and the ligature wire runs distally onto the hook of the molar tube. Now there is no difference between the mechanism of action between the two tiebacks. They act in the same way except this is just based on operator preference. Okay, so This is just based on the ease of use for the operator. Now what is a tieback and why is it used? So active tieback is used during space closure. So like I told you the elastic module applies some sort of force. So when we are giving an active tieback we expand the elastic module to twice its size and then we engage it. So it tries to come back to its original size. Okay, It tries to come back to its original size and it exerts around 50 to 100 grams of force while doing so. This brings about a distalizing or a retractive force which helps in space closure. Now what are the other options? Figure of 8, passive tieback and active lace back. Now this is what is known as a figure of 8 or a lace back. Now lace back are only passive. There is nothing known as an active lace back because there is no elastic module which is present when we give a lace back. Okay now lace back looks completely different from that of a tie back. Here we can see this only ligature wire present which is wound around the hook of the molar tube. Okay it engages the premolar as opposed to a tie back which bypasses the premolar. So this engages the premolar and it engages the crown of the canine. Okay when is this given? So this is given during the alignment stage up until rectangular night eye wire stage. Okay. And why is this given? So this is given in order to control the anterior posterior movement of the maxillary canine. So this is given for anchorage, uh, anterior posterior anchorage control. Now whenever a wire is placed into the bracket, two things are expressed. One is the tip and one is the torque. Okay. The first thing that is expressed is the tip. Torque is only expressed with rectangular wires. Tip can be expressed even with round wires. So whenever the first wire is placed, the aligning arch wire is placed in the, in the, in the brackets, the tip is the first to be expressed. Now the maxillary canine has a positive tip. This means that the canine, uh, because of the tip being expressed, the canine tries to move anteriorly. Okay, now in extraction cases and certain non-extraction cases, we don't want the canine to move anteriorly because ultimately we have to retract the canine. So this becomes like a double motion. First it moves anteriorly and then we have to move it posteriorly. So we don't want this to take place. So in order to prevent this anterior movement of the canine because of tip being expressed, we give something known as a lace back. So because you can see here that the uh, it appears like an 8 it appears like an 8, it's also known as a figure of 8 uh, ligature. Okay, so this is when a lace back is given. Now a tie back is given for a similar reason. However, here you can see that um, we don't engage the canine. Okay, here it is similar to an active tie back except that there is no elastic module. So that's why it's passive. And the ligature wire goes from the hook of the molar tube and it is engaged. Again, it bypasses the uh, premolar and it is engaged in the hook of the posterior arch. Okay, so why is this given and when is this given? So this is given after the rectangular night eye stage. So this is given during the rectangular stainless steel uh, wire stage. So after uh, we have completed the alignment and leveling and before we start with space closure, we place a rectangular stainless steel wire and keep it for one month in order to express itself. Okay, so we want the torque etc to be expressed before we start space closure. So in this stage, we give a passive tieback. 
okay this is also given for anterior posterior control of the anterior segment so that there is no anchorage loss but here we don't engage the canine crown why this is because if we engage uh, like here you saw individual teeth were held together so there is some amount of force which can be applied because of the uh, ligature wire which can bring about distalization of the canine if distalization of the canine takes place then space will open up between the canine crown and the lateral incisor crown and we don't want that because we know that we retract the anterior segment as a whole correct so we don't want additional space to be opened up between the lateral incisor and the uh, canine and again between the canine and the premolar so instead of uh, tying the canine crown back what we do is we place the tie back on the posterior arch hook so this provides anchorage to the entire anterior segment so they are they are held together as well as anterior posterior control is also maintained so this is the uses of the different types of the lace backs and the tie backs which are seen during orthodontic treatment and here because we can see the elastic module and the ligature now we know this is an active tie back.